Hello everyone and welcome to Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. In this our April 8th, 2024 show, we're going to be covering a range of, cop of topics, including uh, what uh, David Corenswet has said about the upcoming Superman movie. We're going to be talking about James Gunn debunking some villain rumours about the new movie. We're going to be talking about the solar eclipse. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing comic books. We've got a new segment, a new series that we're going to be doing starting today. Uh, we've got a Superman analysis of the costumes from live action versions of the Man of Steel over the years. Mark and I are going to be dissecting each of the costumes from all the different live action costumes that we've seen. And uh, we'll start with Kirk Allen in the second half hour of tonight's program. So stick around for that. It's a new series we're starting, starting back at the very beginning, and hopefully we'll lead up to when David Corenswet's costume is revealed in full uh, when we get to that stage down the track. But uh, joining me tonight, as I said, is my good friend Mark Lax. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hello, Steve. How are you? I am doing really well. Uh, no solar eclipse here in the Southern Hemisphere. It's uh, you guys in the north there uh, got to experience that but we'll talk about that in a second uh we want to uh thank our sponsors and our patrons for being part of the show and helping us do superman homepage live douglas meacham john patrick van pelt tina murray and c ralph adler thank you for your support and if you want to join those fine folks and support the show simply click the join button there on youtube there are different levels of membership with different levels of perks or you can go to patreon.com slash superman homepage we love our our sponsors and our patrons. Thank you very much for keeping us going. And if you uh, want to get involved in tonight's show, then all you have to do is simply, uh, you can participate in the comments. Right now, we have got a number of people, Dr. Casey Jones, JP Rocher, Butson, and so many others joining us live as we go along tonight for this Superman Hour of Talk. Uh, we also can get you on the show tonight if you want to call in. Then all you have to do is simply click the, uh, uh, go to supermanhomepage.com slash live where you can click the call now button and you'll be put into the green room where you'll be able to still hear the show, watch the show and be part of it. And we'll bring you on when we have time, if we have time later in tonight's program. Or you can use your fancy phone and scan the QR code on your screen right now and that'll take you to the same place. Again, you'll be put in the green room where you'll be able to watch and be part of the show when we bring you on. But make sure you do have a headset if you are going to speak to us tonight. Uh, there is a bit of a delay. And also make sure you're using an external microphone so that we can hear you properly. So, Mark, yeah, you guys had a solar eclipse. Did you uh, get it in full where you are in your part of the U.S.? No, we had about, uh, I think it was almost 90%. Okay. Um, it, didn't, it didn't get dark exactly. It was sort of more of a twilight. Mm -hmm. But I had the glasses. And uh, I, I watched it, and I'd, I'd never seen one, you know, live before or seen on TV. Mm. But I've never actually seen one, so it was it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. You didn't get any superpowers or anything like the uh, the old no, heroes. No, not this, not this one. Maybe not not, maybe that there's another one in twenty years. So maybe then, uh, if I'm Facebook I'll, user, I'll need it then. yes, uh, we've got a Facebook user. You can uh, put your uh, name in. Uh, the uh, I'll invite you to uh, receive your name in the Facebook group. Uh, members who have granted us permission, we can uh, do that if you uh, so desire. Uh, but they said we will have here in Australia a eclipse in 2028. So in four years' time, uh, down under, we'll be able to get a solar eclipse. So, uh, yeah, I've uh, seen partial eclipses. I've seen some different... Not a full solar eclipse, because there is obviously there's a lunar eclipse where the shadow of the moon is covering the sun. This is actually where the moon goes in front of the sun and covers it in right. totality. So, uh, yeah, that will be that would have been very interesting. So, uh, Dr. Casey Jones says he's in Austin, Texas, uh, where they got 100% coverage, but no superpowers there either. So, and Mind the Gap sadly missed it. So, yeah, I guess you have to be there right on time. Otherwise, it kind of comes and goes pretty quickly. So uh yet yeah, there you have it the solar eclipse and if you i know a few people traveled to metropolis illinois the home of superman where yes even the man of steel the statue there had the his solar eclipse glasses on 
to uh, enjoy, uh, not that I think it would affect Superman's eyes, but nevertheless got into the spirit of it. And uh, Metropolis, Illinois was a great place to watch the eclipse. And thankfully, it sounds like the weather was pretty good without any uh, cloud cover to uh, be uh, in the way from watching the solar eclipse. So uh, Butson says, I was in 99% coverage and watched it in a cereal box. There you go. So yeah, there's so many different ways. I mean, I don't know how they may, you know, but there's all these different ways you can, you can view it. Luckily, so a neighbor of mine had some glasses, so, <laughs> so cool. I got one. There you go. It's one yeah. of those uh, lifetime moments that you live to remember and uh, were cool. That was, it was cool that you were there to see it. So that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's get into tonight's topics and start discussing everything around the man of steel. And uh, speaking of the upcoming movie, as I mentioned, James Gunn uh, took to his social media account for, on threads and some other places to debunk rumors that have been going on around about who the main villain of the upcoming Super Superman movie might be. And there was a rumor going on uh, that the main villain was going to be Ultraman, but not the evil version of Superman from an alternate reality that you might know but a clone created by Lex Luthor. And James Gunn came on his social media account and said, listen, the primary protagonist of Superman is, shockingly, Superman. The main villain of Superman is, shockingly, Lex Luthor. I don't know where all the stuff is coming from, that it's something other than this. There are so many stories coming out every day it's difficult to deal with, and every time I strike down something, I'm giving it attention. So I'll say again, don't believe anything unless you see it here. And why would you want to know everything before the movie comes out anyway? So yeah, <laughs> no Superman, uh, no Ultraman. It is Lex Luthor. As we know, we've got the casting. Nicholas Holt is Lex Luthor. Uh, so yeah, some strange rumors going out and about out there. And this Ultraman one was getting a bit of attention. But I'm glad he's come out and debunked that and said, look, it's not true. I don't know where you guys are getting these things from, but... Uh, don't believe it. And um, it was a silly rumor, if you ask me anyway. I mean, didn't we already see Lex Luthor doing a clone thing of, you know, like the of the doomsday thing in Batman v Superman? Like, like, do we need... Yes, yes. You know, we've had yes. a clone in uh, and, and clone Superman and 4. Nuclear Man. Exactly, <laughs> Nuclear Man. So it's like, really, are you just rehashing old ideas, rumor mongers? Like, let's be a little bit more mm -hmm. um, unique. And, uh, but yeah, so... Lex Luthor is the main villain. Shock horror. Uh, who would have guessed? And, you know, but at the same time, though, I mean, um, there's got to be a lot more than just Lex being the villain. I mean, how many, how often has Lex been the villain in a Superman movie? So hopefully, there, you know, there's going to be a little bit more to what the thing, what he's, what he's doing, and maybe some surprise people coming up. You know. I wouldn't say surprise villains like, oh, maybe Ultraman will show up. I, I mean, you know, who knows? An Amanda Waller or somebody, you know, making an appearance to show that there's more, you know, there's more depth to, to what. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't really know what the story is about anyway. So until exactly. we know much more than that, we can't really say. And we don't know what Lex Luthor's plan is in this movie. Yes, he might. He's right. the main villain and he may create something. He may do something. He may build something. He may even have his own war suit or you know battle armor we don't know but he is the main villain of the film and he may create something or do something as we said to be you know going up against superman or try to kill superman or whatever the story might be but lex luthor is the main villain of the story and we look forward to seeing what the movie is all about and i'm with james gunn i mean yeah we want to know as much as we can about the film without getting spoiled because that's, you know, that's what we do. I mean, that's what we're here for. The Superman Hope page has built an existence on bringing fans information and doing reviews and what have you. But, yeah, I'd love, I love, you know, I long for those days back when you were a kid and the internet didn't really exist. And, yeah, I'm aging myself. And uh, uh, you'd walk into the movie theater, maybe only having ever seen the trailer, and that was it. You didn't know the nitty gritties. You didn't see behind the scenes photos. You didn't have paparazzi out there trying to get this that and the other and you know spoil things before that even uh been revealed on the big screen but 
Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to know little bits without knowing the full story and then going into the movie theatre feeling like, I've already watched this movie because I've seen it all play out online. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's what happens now. I mean, there's just so much information comes out, and you know what? You're not you're not even looking for it. You know, you pick up your phone to look for something, and boom, it's 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 on there. It's like, oh well, that well that's great, you know. And you I mean, you you want to be surprised. I mean, okay, we want to know a little bit more about the story and all of that. And we want to, you know, because it's a Superman movie, and there's all these other heroes that are in it. You know, some of us are like, well, are they going to take over more than Superman? You know, which I don't really think is going to be the case, but you know, so we want to know a little bit of that, and I I understand that. Yeah. But when I go to the movies, I want to, you know, that big reveal that I had no idea was coming. You know, <laughs> and nowadays a lot of times that big reveal, it's either hinted at or you or you find out what it is. You know, yeah. And even when the and, if there is a big spoiler that comes, I mean, it's a big reveal that comes out when the movie is out. If you don't go see it on opening night you're going to have it spoilt for you because there are people who are going to post things online and it's so hard these days not to have things spoilt for you. But, and it's impossible really, as you say, you don't go looking for it. It just, it's in your face, you know, mm -hmm. because of what we do, who we follow online, what our, what accounts we follow on social media, somebody in our circle of friends is going to reveal something, unfortunately, and there is no way to remain spoiler free unless you abstain from being on the internet completely, which in this day and age is virtually impossible because it's so much mm -hmm. a part of our lives and it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you could do about it. There really, there really isn't just, you know, or you just do a total blackout. No, or no phone, no, no, you know, no, no internet, no nothing for another year, a year or so until the movie comes out. And that's it's not going to happen. Not going to so. happen. Yeah. So uh, what we do know about the movie is David Corrensweet was recently at a screening of his new film, The Greatest Hits, which will be screening on Hulu uh, from April 12th. Uh, I don't know much about the film or what it's all about, but he was at a screening at a convention or something somewhere this past week in Atlanta, Georgia, where fans got to see him get up and talk about the film and um, have a chat with him before or afterwards uh, if they were lucky enough. And uh, according to a fan, David Thompson, who is the senior editor at the director, uh, he spoke to David Corrensweet, who said that he described the upcoming Superman movie as having the vibes of All Star Superman and also Superman for All Seasons, which is awesome. If that's got the vibes of those films, then I think that's. Amazing, and that's the kind of Superman movie I'd like to see um, because I think that uh, that's exactly what we want from a Superman film, that kind of vibe. And he also went on to say that uh, David Corrensweet is the nicest guy in the world, absolutely huge, great handshake. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, those two stories I love. Uh, th those are two of the, you know, I mean, some people waver on All-Star Superman. I really, I really loved All-Star Superman. Um, but, but I, you know, you, you can't, I mean, there's a big, there's a positive vibe, you know, in that story, you know, and Superman, there's certain parts of that where Superman really acts like the Superman that you, that you know, that you, you know, that you love. And of course, Superman for all seasons, I don't think I have to go into, you know, how great a story that is and how great, you know, Superman is in that story. But if that's more the vibe of what they're doing, I mean, this is definitely a movie I would definitely want to see this movie and it makes me feel it makes me feel a lot you know better i think knowing that it has that vibe you know of these two stories as opposed to when man of steel came out we had we really had no idea you know we knew we knew the villain and the, and the hero but you didn't know the type of take how it was going to be you know but here i think we have a better we have a better idea of the type of superman we're going to get Yes, indeed. So it's uh, very, I mean, he still says it's very much its own thing. It's very much its own story, but it has the vibe of those stories. So that's great because we don't want them to tell the same stories that we've, you know, I mean, they might be based on that, at, you know, maybe have an adaptation of some of the elements of those stories. Obviously, All-Star Superman is a different 
later version of Superman, like further down in his career, but still had a great mm-hmm. vibe about the story where uh, Superman for all seasons was very much an origin story and it was about the first kind of year of Superman's life and um, and came at it, at it from that angle. But they both had that wholesome vibe, I guess, is what some of the people in our comments are saying, that, that wholesome era of Superman. So um, I love that. I, I love that they're going in that direction, if that is uh, the, the case. And so I'm looking forward to seeing this movie more and more, the more I hear about it. Um, and uh, David Connorsweet, uh, there's a video of him from David Thompson's social media account where he's talking and gee, he has a great deep voice, you know, he just seems to have that <laughs> Superman voice about him. I'll be interested to see how he does his Clark Kent voice, uh, if there is that kind of difference with a higher octave, but, uh, he definitely has the voice for Superman, uh, already. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with him, so I can't, you know, I, I can't really say too much about him because I don't really, I'm not familiar with him, but, um, yeah, we'll see, you know, we'll see how, how his Clark, you know, Superman is, if it's more of a Christopher Reeve or more of a, you know, a, you know, Henry Cavill, more of the John Byrne Superman, you know, how Clark, or I should say, more the John Byrne Clark Kent because you know it was the Clark Kent's the man, Superman's the sky. So we'll we'll see, we'll see what happens. You yeah, know. looking forward to more details coming it's out. Yes. Uh, so Dr. Casey Jones in the comments has asked about the uh, image that we showed of the Superman costume, uh, asking if the yellow is raised more than the red, or if the red is raised more than the yellow. I think they're on par. I think they're on the same level. The thing is that there is almost like a bevel edge to both. Um, the yellow and the red so that they kind of fold over into a gap where the seam, I guess, in between them is. So I think yeah. they're on both on the same uh, plane, if you like, but there is a, um, a bevel on the side where they both roll into uh, the, the, you know, the background, if you like, into the blue or wherever it might be. But there is definitely that kind of a ridge to it. So, But I think they're both on the same plane. I don't think either is higher than the other. So hopefully that answers no, your question. It- at first it appears that the red is a little bit, but as you look at it, like you said, it's just kind of beveled that way, you know? So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to say, but I think it's about, it's about the same. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, uh, yes, before we move on, uh, we've got a lot of great live viewers watching us right at the moment as we go along tonight. Uh, 52 of you, in fact, watching us live 53, it's keeps going up and up. Uh, To get more people on with us, joining us tonight, please give us a thumbs up right now. Uh, Make a comment. Even if you're just lurking, you don't want to say anything of interest, just say hi uh, so we can see the names that are with us tonight. Uh, We can give you a shout out. Uh, But, yeah, just give us a thumbs up right now on whatever social media platform you're watching or our website, uh, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. uh, Give us a thumbs up and then give us a hello uh, so that we know that you're out there and we can... uh, Give you a shout out. All right, so that was what uh, David Corrinswit had to say about the movie. Another actor, another cast member from the film has had something to say about Superman, the upcoming 2025 film, and that was Wendell Pierce, who, as we know, will be playing editor Perry White, Daily Planet editor Perry White. Uh, He had this to say about his excitement uh, to play Perry White. A very exciting uh, piece of casting. I am a a big superhero fan. I'm a big uh, comic book fan. You're going to be playing Perry White in the new uh, Superman film. Yeah. yeah. James Gunn. The great James Gunn. The great James Gunn is directing that film. That's what I hear. You may know more about it than I do. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, sorry. This is, I mean, I know more about your past roles. (laughs) (laughs) I know more about your future. My future roles. But you are for... But, you know, I... I, um, like I said, I, I can remember my lines, but not my characters. Yeah. But I've been looking forward to this. I mean, yeah. I, I never grew up reading comics. Uh, um, so I relied on my friends to tell me about it, you know? Yeah. As you can see, I have a problem with memory. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm excited about this, you know? But like I said, you may know more about it than I do right now. So there you go. It doesn't reveal too much. It doesn't seem to have that great a memory on... Uh, what his uh, role is or what he's doing, he just remembers his lines and is able to speak them and uh, deliver them appropriately. But does say he's excited. Uh, and, you know, 
it doesn't necessarily bother me when people say that they're not really, they never grew up reading comic books or they're not comic book fans. You don't have to be. You don't even have to be a Superman fan. As long as you portray your role fine and you're, you're, you know, you're good at it, um, your background with the character really means nothing to me as far as whether or not you're going to be able to portray the character well. If you're playing Superman, yeah, you have to, or Lois Lane, I'd like you to have a bit more knowledge about the character and the, and the iconic status of the character that you're playing. You don't necessarily have to have read every comic book that's ever been written or view every version of the character that's ever been out there. If in some ways I'd prefer that you didn't, I'd like you to know who Superman was obviously and who doesn't, but I'd like you to put your own stamp on the role, but I'd still like you to be aware of the iconic status of the character that you're playing. Right. I mean, I, I would think, I mean, you know, like you said, he, he didn't never read comic books. He obviously doesn't seem that familiar with Perry White. Um, but you would think you would want him to read a few comics, a few things to get who the character is and then put his own stamp on it. But I, but no, you don't, obviously you don't have to. I mean, there's so many people making superhero, superhero movies who've never read a comic ever you know, and only know the, you know, the character by what's written, you know, in the script and who, you know, who they're playing. Um, so no, you, you don't have to be a comic book fan or a Superman fan, you know, I mean, we like to hear when they say, oh yeah, I'm a big Superman fan. Sure. We love to hear that, but you don't have to be, of course not. They're yeah. actors. Exactly. And as the nostalgic pod blast says in the comments, that's called research. Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter what role you're playing. You want background on your character. Uh, even if it's a, a, a new character, a character that's never been portrayed before on film or anywhere, it's written, you know, it's a brand new script. You want to ask the director as an actor, you want, the, you want to fill in the background of their, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. What's their motivation? What's their background? What's their, you know, you want to build a character, a, a background and a universe around who your character is so that then you can portray them to the best of your ability and you think you've got a good you know idea of who the scope of that character is and whether or not something that they say on screen would be in character for that person that you're portraying so you want to fill in as much detail around about who the character you're portraying is and if there is a wealth of information out there for you to look back on then that's all the better for you because then you have as as they said you've got research there to be able to uh, inform you about who the character is you're portraying. Absolutely. All right. So that's the uh, upcoming Superman film. It will be released July 11th, 2025. We will keep you posted on all the different things happening around the film, including the fact that if you are an extra and you live in the Cleveland area, then you might be interested in working on the upcoming Superman film because Angela Bohm casting is asking uh, does have a casting call out there for a production by the code name Genesis which we now know is what the upcoming Superman film uh, is secretly going by uh, they are looking to begin uh, this month early this month uh, end of sorry end of this month towards the uh, beginning of May so you have time follow them Angela Baum casting on Facebook or Instagram head to our website for the links and you might be an extra a background person in the upcoming film if you're lucky. That yeah, I mean, I think, you know, yeah, I mean, giving them the opportunity because they're they're from Cleveland and, you know, our, our honored uh, creators of Superman are from Cleveland. So they're, mm -hmm. I like that they're doing that. You know, I like that they're giving um, <laughs> the people of Cleveland a, a shot of, you know, being involved. You know, yeah, I, awesome. I, I like it. And it's fun. Uh, I've been an extra uh, on a couple of films, including Ryan Gosling's upcoming F The Fall Guy film, uh, which was filmed partly here in Sydney. And there is a, uh, a scene that is in the trailer, um, and but it's only very short in the trailer. So I'm hoping that uh, when the movie, I think it had its world premiere or its Sydney premiere here uh, last night in, in, in Sydney, um, Fall Guy, uh, you might see me if you're looking for me in the film. Um, you kind of walk past him um, as he's going in like a, a, a airport or a, uh, that kind of a uh, scene. 
uh, down some stairs, down some escalators. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It looks like a good film anyway. But uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to probably see the movie anyway. Now I'm definitely going to see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Did they let you yeah. wear a Superman shirt? No, 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 no. They they well, they dress you up in your own in their own wardrobe. Uh, you bring your own uh, set of clothes as well that they look at as well, and they think, yeah, that's good. You can keep that on or what have you. But sometimes they, so yeah, I'm like got um, headphones around my neck. I've got a backpack, and I'm walking down a set of stairs as uh, Ryan Gosling is at the top of the stairs, looking at this big billboard at the at the top. So um, yeah, you may see me, but we'll. I'll let you know if I spot myself first. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it, it is fun if you want to be an extra uh, on a film. It's long hours, but uh, you meet a lot of nice people and it's a little bit of fun. All right, so that's what's we, what we know about the upcoming Superman film, but the upcoming Supergirl of Tomorrow, a uh, Woman of Tomorrow film, may have found its director. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but Craig Gillespie is supposedly in talks uh, and has been approached to film and direct uh, the upcoming Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow movie, which, as we know, will star Millie Alcock as Kara Zor-El, uh, and she will reportedly or uh, allegedly appear in the upcoming Superman film before starring in her own film. But uh, Craig Gillespie is best known for films such as Cruella and I, Tonya, and as I said, he's in talks supposedly to direct the upcoming Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. So that's interesting. Uh Heard a few people saying, why not choose a female director? In mm. my opinion, just choose the right director, man or woman. Um, but uh, it seems like a good choice. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I, mean, we'll I, know, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen Corello or I, Tanya, but I am no, familiar, I. you know, with, with them to, to a certain degree. So, you know, he sounds like, you know, the, the right guy for the job. Yeah, Mind the Gap says I, Tonya was a good movie, so um, that's a thumbs up from one of our live yep. listeners. All right, so that's the mm -hmm. film side of things. Now, nothing in the world, world of TV for Superman. Uh, we would still know that Superman and Lois is coming. The fourth and final season will be around September, October this year. No release date yet for the second season of My Adventures with Superman animated series, but we'll keep you posted on that. So stand by for any details around what, uh, when that we will exact date for either of those TV properties. But on the in the real world and kind of on the comic book side of things, well, it is a comic book. Mark, you got outbid. I'm sorry, but you know your five million dollar bid just wasn't enough. Six million dollars. Oh, no. Yeah, Action Comics went for six million dollars. Sorry, buddy. I know you were really keen. To, oh yeah, man, you have to find out like this. Yeah, you were, I know you sold you, you know you were trying to sell your soul for it, but Yeah, um, I, I really was. I mean it was it was close, but uh oh man. <laughs> Six million dollars. Wow. Can you believe it? Uh, really it wild. is now wow. the most expensive comic book of all time. It sold at Heritage Auctions uh, this past week. As I said, six million dollars. This is a CGC very fine plus 8.5 grading known as the Kansas City pedigree copy of Action Comics number one sold on April 4th creating history that is a crazy amount of money you first you have to wonder who it is that has that type of money to spend on on the com on the comic book hey, look if we had 500 billion dollars of course we would we would be one of the bidders um, but you would, you wonder that, and then you wonder, is it a comic book fan or is it somebody who thinks they're investing? You know, I mean, you, you just wonder, I mean, you, you never really, I don't think you ever really find out who it is. Do we ever, we never find no, out. No, do I don't think I, 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 yeah, they, they didn't reveal and I haven't heard, but, um, yeah, I mean, if you had that kind of money to throw around, I don't know if you'd be wanting to let people know that that was you. <laughs> I yeah. mean, unless you're a celebrity, like it's, you know, I mean, we know that Nicolas Cage at one point owned a copy of Action Comics number one, and you would expect someone of, you know, the, who sure. earns the type of money that he does for making movies to be able to afford something like that. But um, yeah, um, 
I use the joke and the nostalgic pod blast has just done it as well here on our comments uh, that uh, maybe it was bought by Lee Majors, uh, who, as you know, if you're old enough, was the $6 million man uh, on TV uh, in the series. So, uh, yes. Uh, and on that same on that same point, he was also the fall guy. So there you go. Yes, exactly. That's it. Yeah, right, uh, yeah, yeah, from Superman to Fall Guy, to, you know, Michael's not here to do the, you know, it all comes back to Superman kind of thing. But It does. <laughs> it does. So, yes. Uh, yeah. I posted a thing going, what does Steve Austin and Superman have in common? And people started putting up Steve Austin, the wrestler. And I'm like, no, 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 uh, different different Austin. Um, so, yes, yes uh, the $6 million man, the $6 million comic, uh, Action Comics number one. Congratulations to whoever purchased it. It belongs in a museum. Yes, it does. Something else maybe that uh, maybe, one. yeah, maybe they do. Something that uh, else that uh, sold at auction uh, at the same time was the three-page letter that Jerry Siegel had written to um, the artist Russell Keaton um, to entice him about uh, the Superman concept back in 1934. As we kind of mentioned before, that uh, Jerry was um, kind of despondent the fact that he and Joe were unable to get anybody to purchase the idea. And so he sought out uh, Russell Keaton, who was a well-known comic strip artist of the time. And uh, that letter resulted in Keaton uh, drawing some strips for Superman, but they also were never picked up by any publisher. And so Jerry and Joe recombined their efforts. And as we know, later on sold the rights to Superman for Action Comics number one once they were successful in 1938. But back in 1934, that three-page letter was written and it was sold at auction for $264,000. So, oh, that's a little more my range. Yeah, you know? yeah, I was going to say. Congratulations, yeah. Mark. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, that's come some of the auction items that sold this past week. So uh, some very interesting Superman items on auction. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Then we're going to come back on the flip side and Mark and I are going to do our new segment, the Superman analysis, Superman costume analysis. We are going to pull apart Kirk Allen's Superman costume and take a look at it bit by bit. We've also got the fan favorite segment of our show. We've got uh, This Week in History, and comic book stuff to discuss, so stick with us for the second half hour of tonight's program. So much more to get through. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. If you're enjoying Superman Homepage Live, then please like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also join our YouTube membership program, just click the join button below. Or you can become a patron and support our website by going to patreon.com slash Superman homepage. Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. Supermanhomepage.com for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Man of Steel, and more. SupermanHomePage.com Thanks, Superman Homepage, for all the support over the years. I really appreciate it. I'm Matt Balmer. I'm the voice of Superman and Superman Unbound, and this is the Superman Homepage. Right here on Superman Homepage. Hi, Stephen. This is Lois Lane from The Daily Planet. Do you want to start a video podcast but don't know where to start? Or maybe you've been podcasting for a while but you're bored with the traditional audio-only format. Either way, I've got just the thing. Ecamm Live is the number one choice for busy podcasters who want to easily create professional-looking video podcasts. But why? They're more engaging for your audience, and video keeps their attention so they're more likely to stick around and become part of your community. Let me show you just how easy it is with Ecamm Live. You can drag and drop graphics right onto your show to make it more professional. If you have a co-host or guests, 
bringing them onto your show as a breeze. You can even tweak the look of your guest video no matter where they are. And you can set up your scenes in advance so when your show starts, you can play your intro and easily switch between your scenes during the show. So it really simplifies your workflow and eliminates the need for a bunch of editing. Plus, your isolated audio tracks are saved right onto your computer along with your high quality video files. So there's no more waiting for a link to download your files. They're right there. And once you're done, you can upload it to your syndication platform. It's time to give your audience what they really want. So if you're ready to become a visual authority and take your podcast to the next level with video, join the Ecamm fam. Thousands of podcasters have already made the switch. We're just waiting on you. Just go to supermanhomepage.com slash Ecamm. to you by Canon, the world's leading camera manufacturer. Quick and tasty. Canavision 8 camcorders. I thought you were Superman. Hey, I am. If it moves, shoot it with a Canon. All right, Mark, if it moves, shoot it with a Canon. Shoot it with a Canon, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our new segment. We're going to pull apart the Superman costumes week by week, uh, a new series that we're going to be doing. And we're going to start with Kirk Allen's costume. Kirk Allen obviously uh, played Superman back in 1948 and 1950 when he was the... Turn that off there. He was the actor who portrayed Superman in the Columbia Pictures serials, the first one known as Superman, and the second one, uh, Adam Man versus Superman. And there were 15 chapters of each. And the costume, obviously the movie serials were in black and white and screened in black and white, but the costume uh, was actually in color. So they mm. have some of the costume uh, on display uh, that were sold at Heritage Auctions. But uh, So they have some of the, uh, the costume. So let's go bit by bit and have a look at the costume. We're going to start with the cape. And so there we have some of the cape on display. Now, the thing about the Superman costume uh, with the, the cape is, does it have an S on the back? And that's a big bug bear for a lot of fans who are like, when they don't put it on the cape, it's a real problem for them. But uh, here mm. it is, it's on the cape, and it is exactly the way it is on the chest. Sometimes we've seen it as a yellow, just a yellow version with outline of black like we did in the Christopher Reeve costume, but are you a fan of having the S on the back of the cape? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime I, I see any kind of version that doesn't have the S, I'm always kind of like, no, no, it's got to have the S on the back. Now, I mean, also, is it, hey, is it a deal breaker? I don't know, no. But, but no, definitely a fan of the S on the back. Now, it doesn't tuck into the front of the uh, collar as a lot of the costumes uh, we have seen over the years where the cape is kind of embedded underneath the collar, but here it is attached to the front of the shoulders, which is not a bad look. It still sits pretty nicely, um, mm -hmm. and at least it drapes over the shoulders, which is what I like. The length of the, is a little bit short for my liking. I like it a little bit below the knees rather than above the knees, but it's not a deal breaker. No, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's shorter than, than most of them in the comics at the time. And a lot of the artists, um, you know, uh, Kurt Swan, I don't know who at this point was, was drawing, I mean, Kurt Schaffenberger and all, you know, Wayne Boring, they, they always, the, the cape was always shorter, mm. you know, uh, now whether they were following that or maybe they, they, they couldn't have too long a cape for the, you know, for movability and, you know, and all of that. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I prefer a longer cape, but it's not again, a it, looks, it looks good, yeah. Yeah. So then we move on to the body of the costume and the, uh, obviously, the blue. We can't look at the colors here because it was designed 
to be seen in black and white. They were never intending it to be color because they didn't have color at the time or they weren't filming in color. So um, it was still made out of... And we didn't even have Lycra kind of back then. So while it was still a body suit, it was more of like a woolen material. We've got cuffs there. So that looks very much like a pullover. Um, right. And, the you know, the material isn't as tight as what we've come but then to come to know but then the actors then weren't of that muscle bound you know we needed to see the ripples of their abs and that kind of thing through the mm -hmm. costume either so um it's interesting that there are cuffs on the sleeves uh, that was something that stood out to me in this costume yeah i mean it's almost it's almost sweater like in a way yeah when, when you look at it i mean it's it's baggy you know um and it is on like a said, uh, it's on a mannequin here, so it's not form fitted. You know, Kirk well, Allen would right. have had you know tailors and what have you there, making sure that it was of pinned course. to his to his torso and you know the correct kind of shape for his body. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, you know, you also have to think of the time that it was made and the time that you know, yeah, um, and the budget <laughs> that they exactly. had or didn't have. So I just now, yeah, I find it interesting the cuffs too. It just yeah, it looks almost like a almost like a sweater. Yeah, exactly. And then we move to the S shield that is on the front of the costume, and it, it's obviously we've seen it already on the cape, but the the it's, it's very rough. It's a stitched on thing that it's you know mm -hmm. it's not an applique that uh, has been um, you know designed to be stuck on it's or it's part of the costume it's sewn into as part of the costume but the the size of the s shield is great as far as i'm concerned it's a really good size it's not overly big it doesn't you know come around to his armpits um it's high enough so that it's a chest symbol it's not lower like some of the costumes that we've seen have and the shape of the s is very rough but it's still very much the symbol that we know and love Oh, yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely faithful. I mean, um, again, how you know how it was designed and what they you know what they had to do to you know to, to make it you know stitch it on or, you know what have you. Um, I, I mean, I think they did for the time. I think they did a really good job. I mean, you look you look in the comics at the time, and you definitely recognize that's the same S. I mean, it's a little more crude, obviously. Mm. But it's you know no one no Superman fan is not going to recognize that S. Yeah, exactly. So then we move to another aspect of the costume, and that is the trunks. Now, not every Superman mm -hmm. costume in film or live action has had trunks, but uh, here we have the red trunks. Uh, we won't look at the belt at the moment because it's not in this particular photo. But these are very long shorts. They're almost mm -hmm. like shorts. They're not the briefs that we've come to see in some films. They're not the speedos, if you like, that in some versions. They are very much long shorts more than, I mean, you know, you get that circus performer trunks kind of feel about it. Right. I mean, two things. One, you know, obviously I I, I prefer the, the, for him having the trunks. Yes. Um, but that is, that is very long. And I think it's possible. Um, it's possible that they didn't want anything too tight, <laughs> too small. You know, this was what nineteen fifty. Yeah, nineteen fifty. Yeah, nineteen fifty. Yeah. So obviously, they didn't want to go with anything that was a little too, you know, that could be revealing. So I under, you know, I understand that. Um, it, it's just it is way too long that I <laughs> that I'm used to. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm just uh, I'm just glad that it had it had, uh, it had trunks. And though, and back then it would, of course, you know, because back that then, was there would never be a debate. Yeah, there was never yeah. any talk about removing the trunks back then. So it's right. definitely faithful to what was in the comics. And then, as I mentioned, the belt there is a, a cop that's I think from the Superman Museum in Metropolis, Illinois. That photo uh, you have the belt. It was a yellow belt, um, you know, rubber of some kind. And then you had mm -hmm. what was almost like a metallic gold um, oval belt buckle, uh, which uh, we did see in the George Reeves version as well. But, uh, you know, it, it's a yellow belt. Yeah. Uh, as long as you That's got that, you the yellow belt, you know, of course, it, you know, watching it in black and white. 
Yeah, you wouldn't know. It wouldn't matter. But I do. I mean, I like the 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 fact that they were able to add color. You know, and not have to do. You know, I I mean, you know, we'll we'll discuss later the the George George Reeves, but you know, they they did. You know, it was a black and white show, so they didn't. They had a more or less a black and white costume. You know, it needed to just simply be the the correct. um, uh, You know, look opposite from it. It needed to be able to see that one was darker than the other. Right, right. Then we move on to the boots. Now, the boots were very much that type of Robin Hood uh, kind of felt, you know, almost like an actor on stage, you know, uh, a dancer, if you like. Uh, They're not boots. They're not leather. They're not uh, anything other than, you know, really, I I guess, felt type of of boot that's got stitching up the side. Uh, They do have that kind of V formation at the top of the shin, which is what Mm -hmm. I like to see in a Superman boot. But, um, yeah, very much a product of its time oh yeah then absolutely you know i mean they're not they're they're not a boot you know i mean when you watch if you're watching it on the big screen back and you know at, at that time i you know i wondered i don't think anyone like like we are we're, stu- we're studying <laughs> no. every aspect of it so they, they might not even really have even thought about it oh he has the boots okay you know, but we're we're looking at it, and yeah, I mean, it's it just it's basically felt stitch stitched together. And you could um, you could see how this would fit under Clark Kent's dress shoes. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, no, a, absolutely. You just put the shoes design. over and you know, away you go. You wouldn't have to worry about it. No. And then uh, we look at Kirk Allen himself. You know, of course, the hair is also very much a part of, and the look is very much a part of the Superman costume, if you like. And Kirk Hallen had that wavy hair. They've always, almost tried to give him the uh, the S curl, if you like, or the spit mm. curl. Um, so he definitely has the right look, and he has the jawline, and he has that good rugged lot type of look that you you know that you need uh, from for Superman. And uh, I think he very much looked the part. Yes, no, he he definitely he definitely did look the part. I mean, I think of all the Superman, I you know. Um, I, he was the, I'm not saying he was the least favorite that I didn't like him as super. I just think it's the way he looked, um, was not the best compared to everyone who followed him. Mm. Yeah. I but think, I mean, you know, he definitely set a tone that, uh, would last for many years. And, uh, we obviously then George Reeves came after him. And so, um, we can see similarities in the costumes, but, that is our analysis of the Kirk Allen costume. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll go through each one. We'll be doing George Reeves next, but uh, that was good. Thanks, Mark. I, I, I like looking yeah. at those kind of things and different aspects. Yeah, it was, that was fun. All right, well, let's jump into the fan favorite segment of our show. All right, our fan favorite question from last week was, what is your favorite Mr. Mixie's Piddly comic book cover? And we had quite a few people uh, write in for this one. So who did we have first, Mark? Well, first we had Alfie Falsatelli, I hope I said that right, who wrote, after flipping through my comics, I realized this is the only one I have with Mixie on the cover. Also, just learn this was the first time he looked this way, which is how I always remembered him. As a side note, I recently watched the Superboy TV series and really enjoyed the actor who played this version. Yeah, thank you, Alfie. That is a great cover. Uh, Mr. Mixie Pitalik is the only man for me, says Lois. So, uh, yeah, interesting cover yeah, there. That. And interesting, yeah, that's a, the common version that we know today of Mixie. So, thank you, Alfie. Next up, we had JP Roach who said, My favorite Mr. Mixie's Pitalik cover is Adventures of Superman 441, The Tiny Terror of Tinseltown. This cover by Jerry Ordway is very memorable as the marble tile floor stark, st- floor stark imagery has stuck in my head, despite this being one of the first comics I ever read. Yeah, great cover. Thank you. Yeah, that is a great cover. JP. And who's next? And Lorenzo Valdez wrote, in lieu of sending in a favorite Mixi cover this week, I actually have some information and images for the new Superman trivia magazine that Stephen Mark discussed on the latest Superman homepage live episode. 
I found the magazine for sale at a Target store here in Florida in the U.S. I bought two copies, one to keep in pristine condition on my bookshelf and the other to read and then from which to cut out images and plaster around my office. I'm attaching photos to this email that I took of the magazine images with which my office is now decorated. The magazine is a super fun read and as you can see has a lot of super cool images, but as you were wondering, it is not 100% accurate. One particular goof I noticed is that towards the end of the magazine, some stills of Clancy Brown's Lex Luthor on Superman the Animated Series are misattributed in the caption to coming from the Ruby Spears Superman cartoon. Ah, well, thank you for that, uh, Lorenzo. Yeah. That was great. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the magazine and um, looking to try to purchase one myself. So thank you to those people who replied to this week's fan favorite question. Our new fan favorite question for this week is, what is your favorite Brainiac comic book cover? So uh, Brainiac featured pretty heavily in this week's, or will feature pretty heavily in this week's Action Comics issue, which we'll get to in a second. So who is your, what is your favorite Brainiac comic book cover? Get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. The email address is info at supermanhomepage.com. Send your replies to that email address, info at supermanhomepage.com, and we will read out and show the responses when we return to this segment next week. So that is the fan favorite segment of our show. All right, let's jump into This Week in History. Here we go. Come with me now, my son, as we break through the bars of your earthly confinement, traveling through time and space. All right, so here we go for this week in history. Let me bring up some of the images that we need to have for this week. And we start back in 1954, nothing in 1944. So we jump to 1954, where we see Superboy number 33. There were three stories, The Case of the Crying Clown, The Pet from Outer Space, and The Crazy Costumes. And then we have a very interesting Clark Kent cover on the Kent mm -hmm. farm for the a case of the crying, uh, which one is this one? The crazy costumes. Yeah. Go. Looks like a scarecrow. <laughs> and he, he has the scarecrow's clothes and the there scarecrow you go. has his. Then we jump to 1964, where this week in 1964 saw the release of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen number 77, The Colossus of Metropolis. That's on the cover there. There are also The Kid Who Couldn't Lose and Jimmy Olsen Super Thief with the stories in there and there is jimmy once again taking on a weird and wacky persona mm -hmm. then we jump to 1974 where this week saw the release of superman number 277 uh, the two stories in this were the biggest game in town and the pizzeria peril <laughs> the pizzeria peril really interesting the metropolis home of superman uh, sign down the bottom is very reminiscent of the actual Metropolis home of Superman uh, sign that exists in Metropolis, Illinois, on the outskirts as you enter the town. Uh, that is, it's the same image and everything. So uh, that is really cool. Yeah, I, uh, they may have gotten it from from this, and it also might not have been the only time that the comics had used that. You know, yeah, exactly. Metropolis home of Superman. Yeah. Then in 1984, we jumped to the this week in 1984, saw the release of Superman number 397, the Born Again Kryptonite Man, uh, a very cool cover there by Eduardo Burrito. Uh, this was written by Paul Kupperberg. Uh, so that was in 1984. And then we jumped to 1994, where Superboy number five came out in this week in 1994. Live by the Sword, Die by the Sword was the title of the internal story. Written by Carl Kiesel with art by Tom Grummet and Doug Hazelwood. Great pairing of artists there. And also yes. in 1994, we saw Superman Doomsday Hunter Prey number one. Now, this was a big deal yes. at the time. Dan Jurgens, the writer, Brett Breeding, the Inca, uh, and Dan Jurgens with Brett Breeding doing the, the artwork uh, and uh, as well. So on the cover and internally, that it was a cool, oh, cool yes. comic book. This, was, this is a great one. I, yeah. I loved, loved this, uh, this book. Then in 1994, the same week, saw the Superman, the Man of Steel number 34 released. Uh, this was written by Louise Simonson with John Bogdan Bogdanov uh, as the artist with Dennis Yankee as the Inca. And uh, this was obviously during the Mike Carlin era and a big 
he was a, uh, a guest on our show a couple of months back, and uh, this was another cool cover. Yes, the Lex Men. <laughs> yeah. Then we jump to 2004, where Justice League Adventures number 30 was released, and on that same week, we saw the release of Superman Birthright number 9, uh, written by Mark Wade. Uh, and that was uh, 2004. Then we jump to 2014, where Justice League 3000 number 5 was released, Firestorm Rising. That same week saw the release of Superboy number 30. Uh, that was Forget the Past, was the internal story title, written by Aaron Kudar. And that same week saw the release of Superman Wonder Woman number 7. And a very emaciated Superman on the cover mm -hmm. there. It's a bit weird and wacky. Uh, so that was <laughs> the comic books that were out at the time. And then we look at this week in history in the, in the real world. Uh, and we had the birthday of Russell Crowe, who played Jor-El in the movie Man of Steel. He was born in Wellington, New Zealand in 1964 on April 7th. And... Jack O'Halloran, who played Non in Superman the Movie and Superman 2, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in on April 8th, 1943. So it's his birthday today. Happy birthday to Jack, who has also been a guest on this show. John Schneider was also born today, April 8th, in uh, Mount Kisco in New York in 1960. Obviously, he played Jonathan Kent in Smallville, but obviously probably better known to most people as one of the Duke boys in Dukes of Hazard. Yes. Uh, on April 10th, Kyla Lee, who played Alex Danvers in the Supergirl TV series, she was born in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1982. April 11th will be the birthday of Millie Alcock, who, as you know, will be playing the upcoming Supergirl. Uh, she was born, it says here, in Sydney, Australia in the year 2000. Wow. Another fellow Aussie. <laughs> so happy birthday to Millie for this week. Alice Lee, who does the voice of Lois Lane in the My Adventures with Superman animated series, was born in Glenview, Illinois in 1989. So happy birthday to Alice. And that is This Week in History. There you go. So we quickly jump to the comic book side of things where this week, this is what you have to look forward to if you are a fan of the comic books. Here is the books that you will be able to read. And uh, one of them reviewed by Mark. Uh, we have, if I can get my images all ready to go. We've got Action Comics, number 1064. That'll be reviewed by Mark. You'll be able to read that a review tomorrow on our website. That is available in a couple of different variant covers right there. And plenty of them for Action Comics always. And then you have Sinister Sons, number three, out this week. That is also available in a couple of different variant covers. Also out this week is the second issue of Suicide Squad Dream Team which Bizarro is a member of, and that is also available in a few variant covers. And then you've got the trade paperback, Volume 2 of DC vs. Vampires, out this week as well. And that pretty much brings us to the end of tonight's action-packed episode of Superman Homepage mm -hmm. Live. We hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the new segment where Mark and I analysed the live-action Superman costumes. Kirk Allens was tonight. George Reeves will be next week. But thank you, Mark. Appreciate your co-hosting the show with me tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. And thank you to all our live viewers who were part of tonight's show. Romel Butson, Nostalgic Podblast, Dr. Casey Jones, Matthew Cody, uh, and so many others, uh, Justin, uh, and all our live. We love having all our live viewers watching us and being able to participate in the comments. So thank you so much for being part of tonight's show. Mark and I will be back next week on Monday, April 15th at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time for another edition of Superman Homepage Live. We hope you'll join us then. Thanks to our sponsors and our patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, Tina Murray, and C. Ralph Adler. Make sure you check out supermanhomepage.com for all your, life, all your daily updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. I'm Steve Eunice. On behalf of myself and Mark Lax, thanks for watching Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com. Good night.